Hey everybody, how's it going? We're going to do a quick tip tonight on a, on a, I think on an older feature that I haven't ever touched on. I know that for sure. Um, and it's, and I think it's one that's been in here a little while in Idea Maker. Um, and, uh, and there's not much documentation on it at all, which is, uh, kind of oddball. There's, there's some, you really got to hunt for it. Um, but it doesn't really explain very well how it does. And so I've been playing with this a little bit, um, <clears throat> to, to sort of, See what you all think, because maybe it's something you'd want to use. So it's about custom infill patterns. So you can upload your own images, and you can create custom infill patterns that you can use inside of your parts. And it's a pretty straightforward um, uh, way to set it up. And so, you know, you know the old uh, the old drill. If you're new to the channel, you know, like and subscribe, and you'll get some more tips on whatever 3D printing and CNC stuff and all that good stuff. But uh, but anyway, let's let's dive into it because it's 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 a cool concept. <clears throat> And, um, and I'm curious to see how you all would use it, because after we're done talking about the process for it, we can talk about some potential uses for it um, at the end of the video. So, so hang out till the end, let's, and we can, uh, we can discuss some of those. So it's, uh, it's pretty simple. When you've got Idea Maker open, you go to the Slice submenu here, and you've got this custom infill pattern uh, selection. Let me open that up. So what it lets you do is upload any image, right? So you can upload an image, like I created this little star in Inkscape, and I did this... I pulled down this action comics comic book cover uh, and then pulled in this fail, you know, this little fail stamp here. And, and it's a real simple process. When you want to add a photo, you just hit the plus, pick whatever photo you want, and it pulls it in uh, and it gives you your original photo here, or your original image, and then it gives you a black and white representation. Um, you are sort of on the low end of the size of the image limited to the the native um, dimensions and pixels that it was imported at. So you can see this came in at 99 by 52 pixels and it converts that to millimeters, right? So here's the millimeter conversion. So like a, what does this come out to? So a, um, one pixel equals like a, a quarter of a millimeter or something like that. So that's what it's doing. And you really, you can go up in size, but I can't like shrink this. So I couldn't like Take, bring this in and, and then make it smaller, you would have to change the size of the image in some other program before you import it if you wanted to bring it in small. So you need to do some conversion there, just so you know. Again, you can go up, right? So I can take this up, no problem, right? And you can see how it changes the DPI or millimeters per pixel, but I cannot go down below the 198 by 104. Won't let me. I can't, if you type something in, it just defaults back and yada, yada, yada. Again, you can go up, but you can't go down. So you want to tweak your threshold until you get something that's you know a little bit more solid. So if you go if you go sort of down, uh oh, cancel. If you go down an image, you see you lose a whole bunch of detail. And as you start ticking up, um, the detail will start to come back. Hopefully, detail come back. Detail come back. Let's do uh, one ninety. Yeah, there you go. So so that's what happens, right? So the more the the more you tweak the threshold the more detail, things like that come in and out of play. Uh, so I'm just gonna bump this up to 200, give it full detail here, uh, and then you name it. So I name this one fail, and then once you're done, you just hit X. <clears throat> now you need to bring it apart. So uh, for this particular scenario, we're just gonna bring in an example part. So I'm gonna go file, examples, and I'm gonna do a calibration cube. And I'm gonna take this calibration cube and I'm gonna go ahead and scale it to, what was it, 198 by 104. Oh, don't uniform. 104. And I'm just going to leave this down at like 10 millimeters. So there we go. So we got this <clears throat> 4 by whatever, 5 by 3.5 or, or 5 by 4, or whatever this is, size card. Now we can just go to the slicing template. You pick any template you want, hit edit. <clears throat> you make sure you roll over here to the infill tab. And under the infill pattern, right, you have your sort of standards right here, right? So grid and rectilinear and, you know, all the ones that sort of come out of the box with Idea Maker. And down here are the ones that you name, uh, all of the special custom ones that, you, that I've done. So here's the fail one that we just did. And uh, just a quick note too, like infill density is ignored. So when you do a custom infill pattern, your infill density is ignored completely. So it um, doesn't matter what you put. I've checked it, I've tested it, nothing happens. Um, so we do that. I'm just going to hit OK. Let's go ahead and slice it. Uh, OK. And this does take a while. Um, 
of all the conversion and everything it's doing and and um it can it can take a while so if you don't have a i don't know a higher end machine this could really tax your gpu and your ram so actually i have my my task manager pulled up here um let's let's see what it's running at here yeah so obs studio is running pretty high d makers low right now and i think that's because it's done so if we say preview um it is oh yeah the, the ram is ram's going crazy so this will take a bit i'm going to pause the video okay so we're back and this took i don't i could be like all uh framed out uh dropping frames or something i don't know because this the gpu is really uh <clears throat> really kicking high right now um yeah i can see my resources hopefully that came in OBS has taken a bunch, but uh, Idea Maker has sucked up a ton of RAM and is taxing the GPU as well. So hopefully I'm still sort of fluid, but um, Idea Maker is for sure running laggy now. Um, and you can see the part, you know, it's just a standard looking part. You really need to get into your infill in order to see what's going on. So here's what's happened, right? You can see the F and the A and the I and the L, and it's basically converting the white space to circles, right? All the circles around, and it's converting all the black space to, um, to squares, essentially. Um, and that's all it does. And you can see, I don't know if you saw, but this was like a 13 and a half hour, uh, print time. And, um, and that's what that feature does. And, um, other than, other than like, you know, maybe not printing it with any top layers and maybe you're going to light this up and maybe you can use it as like a cool name tag or something like that. Um, I don't know of any other use for this. And um, I'm going to close the preview. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this to sort of chill out the GPU on, on this computer. So I don't know why, I don't know why, um, be, beyond just sort of having a cool infill pattern and like doing something tricky like, like, like a nameplate or a sign, or if you're going to backlight it, you know, that could be kind of cool. Um, I think I'd pull my freaking beard out if I had to wait 13 hours for a part that size to print. That's, uh, that's wackadoodle for me. But I'm curious to know what you all would use it for. So if you, if you want to drop a comment, I'll leave comments open. Um, it's, it's an interesting feature. I'm just not sure in, in what's the use case um, other than what I just mentioned. So I'm curious to, to hear your thoughts. And, and like I said, this one's been around for a little while. And I, so I think it came in in the same release that the uh, image to 3D came in. So if you're not familiar with that, when you go to the import model section here, you can import any, you know, including pictures, right? So if we bring in the Action Comics thing here, this allows you to essentially do a, um, you know, like a lithophane. So if I'm gonna print this, this is the size that it comes in and you can for sure tweak this one up and down, no problem. Uh, maintain the aspect ratio. What do you want your max height to be, right? So if your dark areas are gonna be your tallest, what do you want your max to be? So I'll say, Two, oops, two millimeters, not 20. And then you can specify a minimum height. Um, and then a blur amount, which, in, and this is something you just have to tweak with a little bit. And then a mesh reduction, things like that. But those are all items that you should you should probably play with. And then when you hit OK, it loads the, it loads the image, it converts it into a 3D model. And so you can see that now you have some, some height differentiation between whatever the dark areas and the light areas were. And then, so when you print this out, and backlight it, it comes out really cool. Uh, it gets kind of crazy good detail. Sometimes it looks better when you do it like that. So that's the way it comes out. And when I print when I print lithophanes, I actually print them in this orientation. So if I spin this up and then I flip it, uh, it's upside down, of course. So like I'll typically print them in this orientation, right? In the middle of the bed, about like that. So that the basically the um, the um, the Y is just basically the, the bed on my Ender 3 is just moving front and back, right? It's moving forwards and back a little bit. And the X is not doing a whole bunch of, uh, you know, side to side movement. It's only moving a couple of millimeters right on either side. Uh, and I print it um, oriented parallel with the Y because as this thing's sort of moving back and forth, there's less wobble uh, if it's sitting in this orientation. Than if it's moving. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. I digress. So I think that the custom infill pattern feature came in at the same time this feature did, because I think it was a clever way, a clever way to reuse some code. Um, it was already converted an image of lights and darks into um, different heights of the model, and I think it was probably an easy, an easy move in that case to say, oh, but we can also convert them to different shapes like circles and squares uh, if we convert it to, to black and white type of thing. So that's my guess. 
I'm interested to hear your comments on uh, what you would use the custom infill pattern for. So um, again, like and subscribe.